Hello and welcome to the course Design and Analysis of Algorithms. Today we will discuss Grady algorithms. An optimization problem is a problem that has multiple feasible solutions, each having a specific cost. Our objective is to find the best of all possible solutions. Greedy algorithms are typically used to solve optimization problems. A greedy algorithm works in phases. At each phase, it makes a choice that looks best at the moment without regard of any future consequences, hoping that by choosing a local optimum at each phase, global optimum can be achieved. Once a choice has been made, it cannot be undone on subsequent step of algorithm. Greedy algorithms are simple and appealing but don't always give you the best solution. However, greedy algorithms can often come close to the globally optimal solution. Simple examples of greedy algorithms include playing a deck of cards by making best move without look ahead and giving few, fewest number of coin as a change. Let's have a look at a real world example where we apply greedy algorithm in daily life. Suppose we want to count out a certain amount of money using the fewest possible bales and coins. How would a greedy algorithm solve this problem? At each step, we take the largest possible bale or coin that does not overshoot. For example, if we have to pay the bale of 6,658 rupees, we will start off with a 5,000 bill, then a 1,000 bill, which makes it a 6,000 rupees. We are left with 658 rupees. So the largest bill that can be paid is 500 bill, and then the 100 bill, and then we are left with 58 rupees. So the next largest bill that we can use is the 50 rupees bill, and then the 5 rupees coin followed by 2 rupees coin and a 1 rupees coin. So that is the fewest possible bales and coins that would be required to pay 6,658 rupees. So does this algorithm always find an optimal solution? For Pakistani and US currency, greedy algorithm always gives an optimal solution. As mentioned earlier, Greedy algorithm do not always give an optimal solution. Let's see an example where the greedy algorithm fails. Let's assume a fictional monetary system, Kron, which has 1 Kron, 7 Kron and 10 Kron coins. Using greedy algorithm, we need to count 15 Krons. We would get a 10 Kron coin followed by 5 1 Kron coins. For a total of 15 crones, using greedy algorithm, 6 crones are required. However, a better solution is to use 2 7 crone coins followed by 1 1 crone coin, which requires only 3 coins. The greedy algorithm results in a solution, but not in an optimal solution. A greedy algorithm works if a problem exhibits the following two properties, optimal substructure and greedy choice property. Optimal substructure property states that an optimal solution to the problem contains within it optimal solution to sub-problems. The greedy choice property states that a globally optimal solution can be achieved by making a locally optimal choice which means by choosing a locally best or optimal solution, we can hope that a globally optimal solution can be achieved. In today's lecture, we will look at some of the greedy graph algorithms. A spanning tree of a graph is a tree that connects all the vertices of the graph. That is, the tree spans every vertex in the graph. A minimum spanning tree is a spanning tree on a weighted graph that has the minimum total weight. For a given graph, there can be many spanning trees, but generally there is only one minimum spanning tree unless there are ma many edges of equal smaller weights. 
Given a connected, undirected weighted graph, find the minimum spanning tree using edges that minimize the total weight. Which edges should be picked to find the minimum spanning tree of this graph? Two common greedy algorithms are used to find the minimum spanning tree. The Kruskal's algorithm and the Prim's algorithm. For Kruskal's algorithm, the idea is to greedily construct the minimum spanning tree by starting with each vertex in its own component and repeatedly merging two components into one by choosing a light edge that connects them. So we scan the set of edges in monotonically increasing order by weight and add the edge with the smallest weight first to the minimum spanning tree. Edges added must be safe edges not to ruin the tree property. So we select an edge that does not make a cycle. Kruskal's algorithm uses the following operations. Make set operation, which creates a set containing a single item U. Find set, which finds the set that contains U. And union of U and V, which merges the set containing U and the set containing V into a common set. Following is the pseudocode for Kruskal's minimum spanning tree algorithm. We start off with the minimum spanning tree as an empty set since we have not selected any edge. For each vertex V in the graph, we make it as a set of its own. So each vertex will be in its own set. Then we sort the edges of the graph by increasing order of their weight. Once the edges have been sorted, we select the edge that has the least weight or which is the lightest edge and then we check to see if both ends of that edge are in the same set which means that the both the vertices at the end of these uh, this edge is it in the same set if it's not in the same set then we add that edge to the minimum spanning tree and we merge the sets. So we merge the set containing vertex U and vertex V and we iterate until all the edges have been processed. Once all the edges have been processed, we will have the minimum spanning tree. Let's apply Kruskal's algorithm to the following graph to see how this algorithm works. At first, we will make each vertex into an individual set as represented by different colors. And we will sort edges based on their increasing weight. Once the edges have been sorted, we pick the edge with the minimum weight which in this case is 1 and in this line here we will see if both endpoints of this edge is in the same set. Here the both endpoints are of different color which means that they are in different set so we can safely add this edge to the minimum spanning tree. After applying union, both endpoints now belong to the same set. Next, we select the edge of way 2 and see if the endpoints of this edge belong to the same set. In this case, they are of different set. So we add this edge to the minimum spanning tree and apply union so that the endpoints of this edge are now in the same set. Next, the edge of weight 5 is selected. Its both endpoints are in a different set. So we select this edge and insert it into the minimum spanning tree. Apply union and both endpoints will now belong to the same set.
Next, we select edge of weight 8. Both the endpoints of this edge are in a different set. So we select this edge and insert it into the minimum spanning tree. We apply union so the endpoints are merged into a single set. The next edge to be selected is of weight 9. In this case, both endpoints of this edge belong to the same set. So the if condition is false. So this edge will not be inserted into the minimum spanning tree because if we select this edge, a cycle will be formed. Next, we select the edge of weight 13. Both the endpoints are in a different set. So we insert this edge into the minimum spanning tree. Apply union so that both endpoints are merged into a single, single set. Next, we select edge of weight 14. Both endpoints are in a different set. So we select this edge and insert it into the minimum spanning tree. So we find out the two sets these endpoints belong to and merge these sets by applying union. Now all of the vertices in the graph belong to the same set. From the remaining edges, whichever edge we select will form a cycle. So we discard all these remaining edges. By applying Krushka's algorithm, we get the following minimum spanning tree for the given graph. The runtime of Kruskal's algorithm depends on the time taken for the make set, find set, and union operations. So let's see how these operations can be implemented. We can implement the simple set using array named member. So the position in the array gives the set number. For example, a member array with these following numbers indicate what set they were, these vertices belong to. So vertices 1 and 3 belong to set 1. Vertices 4 and 5 belong to set 2. And vertex 2 belong to set 4. Make set runs in constant time for a single set as we just have to go to one index and mark the label of that set. Similarly, find set runs in constant time as we, can, is, as we can go to the index of that vertex and determine which set it belongs to. Union operation scans through the member array and update old members to be the new set. In this case, the runtime can be big O of n length, which is the length of the member array. So what will be the complexity of Kruskal's algorithm? The for loop for make set will take V operations as they are V vertices. Sorting E number of edges will take E log E if we use heap sort. Checking to see if both endpoints of our edge belong to the same set, will take constant time. And union operation will take V operations as we see in the last slide. The complexity of each iteration of this for loop is order of V because of the union operation. And this for loop will run e number of times which is the number of edges so the total complexity will be ev so the total complexity of crucial algorithm will be big o of ev why does the crucial algorithm works correctly let's assume the algorithm is wrong and result is not a minimum spanning tree then at some stage this algorithm adds a wrong edge. If it wrong, adds a wrong edge, then there must be an edge with a lower weight which should have been added. But this algorithm chooses lowest weight edge at each step 
which is a contradiction. Hence, Kruspel is resulting in minimum spanning trim. Prim's algorithm is another algorithm that determines the minimum spanning tree of a graph. The idea is to greedily construct a minimum spanning tree of a graph by starting from an arbitrary vertex, the R as the root of the tree. While the tree doesn't contain all the vertices in the graph, find the lightest edge leaving the tree and add it to the tree. To implement this, we use priority queue to find the light edge quickly. It can be implemented as a min heap. Also, it can be implemented as a linear array. Following is the pseudocode for Prim's minimum spanning tree algorithm. Initially, we insert all the vertices in the priority queue. Initialize the key of each vertex to infinite and set parent of each vertex to null. The key value of the root node will be zero. Then while the queue is not empty, we remove the vertex from the queue that has the minimum key value and explore its, its neighbors. If the neighbor is in the queue, and is not the part of the tree and if the edge weight to the neighbor is less than the key value of the neighbor then we can assign u to be the parent of neighbor v and the key value of neighbor v would be the edge value between u and v. To have a clear idea on how the prim algorithm works Let's apply the Prim's algorithm on the following given graph. Initially, all the vertices are inserted into the priority queue. The key value of each vertex is assigned to infinity except the root node, in this case, A, which is 0. In the first iteration of the while loop, vertex A is extracted from the queue as it has the minimum key value of 0 and for each neighbor of A that does not belong to the tree which is white color we check to see if the edge weight is less than the key value so previously the key value of B and C were infinite so in this line here we assign 6 to be the key value of B and 4 to be the key value of C. And A is assigned to be the parent of B and C. In the next iteration of the while loop, C will be extracted from the queue as it has the minimum key value. For all the neighbors of C, we check to see if they are in the queue and the edge weights are less than the key value of the neighbors. If that is true, we assign C to be the parents of those neighbors and update the key values. So the value of key value of B previously was 6 from A. Now 5 is lesser than 6. So the key value of B will now be 5 and the parent of B will be updated from A to C. Similarly, the key value of G was infinite. So 2 is less than infinite. So the key value of G will be 2. And similarly, the key value of D will be 9. Since G has the minimum key value, in the next iteration, G will be extracted from the queue. F and H are the neighbors of G, 
that are in the queue and their key value was infinite so the key values will be updated to 8 and 15 respectively for f and h and g will be assigned the parent to f and h after we have updated the key values in the queue the minimum key value is of b which will be extracted in the next iteration although e and f being neighbor of b are in the queue but the if condition only holds true for vertex e because the key value of f is already smaller than the edge weight of 10. So in this iteration only the e value will be updated from infinite to 14 and the parent of e will be assigned to be b and the status of f vertex remains the same as if condition for f vertex was false. In the next iteration, f will be extracted from the queue. The only neighbor of f in the queue is e, which had a previous value of key to be 14, but the edge weight here is 3. So the key value of e is updated to 3 and f is assigned to be the parent of e. After updating the key values, e has the minimum key value, so e will be extracted from the queue in the next iteration. Since e does not have any neighbor in the queue, the if condition becomes false and we move on to the next iteration where d will be extracted from the queue because its key value is the minimum of 9. D also does not have any neighbor in the queue. So the if condition becomes false and we move on to the next iteration where H is the only vertex remaining in the queue which will be extracted from the queue in the next iteration. H does not have any neighbor in the queue. So if condition is false. So we move on to the next iteration and since the queue is empty we terminate from the while loop and our Prim's algorithm for minimum squaring tree is complete. Choosing parent vector p, here is the final minimum spanning tree of the graph using Prim's algorithm. No matter where you start from as the root node, the key values and the parents of the vertices can vary, but the resulting minimum spanning tree will be the same. As discussed earlier, there are two ways to implement the queue. One is the minimum heap and the other one is a linear array. If we use the minimum heap, what will be the complexity of Prim's algorithm? Inserting all the vertices in the queue and updating their key values will be order of v since they are v vertices. The while loop will take order of v because they are v vertices and each in each iteration a single vertex will be extracted. The extract min operation takes log of v operations for a single vertex and since they are v vertices the total time taken for extract min operation will be v log v. Since for each vertex we are visiting its neighbors, so over all iterations of the for loop it will take order of e operations. This is because the sum of the degrees of all vertices in a graph is 2 times e which is order of e. Updating a key value in a heap requires log of v operations since we have to find the vertex in the heap first and then update its key value. And since the for loop 
is taking order of E operations. So the total time taken for updating the keys is E log V. The inner loop takes order of E log V for the heap update inside the order of E loop. This is over all executions. So it is not multiplied by order of V for this while loop. So this is included in the order of E runtime through all edges. So the total runtime or the complexity of Prim's algorithm is E log of V. That is because V log V plus E log V and we see that the number of edges is much more than number of vertices in a graph. So our total time taken will be order of E log V. If we use linear array to implement the queue, what will be the complexity of Prim's algorithm? To insert all the vertices in the queue and to update the key values and the p values, it will require order of v operations. Here we are using two linear arrays, one for the key values and one to reflect the parent node. And we use the index as the vertex number and the content of the array as the distance value. The while loop will take order of v times because they are v vertices which have to be extracted from the queue. The extract main operation for a single vertex require linear time of v because we have to find that item, the minimum uh, item with the minimum key in the array. So it's going to take v operations and for v vertices it's going to take v square operations. So this for loop will run order of E over the entire entire while loop as we discussed in the last slide. And the key update operation will be run in constant time as we are going to update it in the array and we already know the index of the vertex. So over in the entire while loop, the key update operation will require order of E operations. The inner loop takes order of E over all iterations of the outer loop. So it is not multiplied by order of V of this while loop. So the total runtime of Prim's algorithm using linear array as a, to implement the queue is v square plus e which is big O of v square. So using minimum heap the runtime was e log v but using linear array the runtime is v square. So which one is worse? Since v square is larger than e log v, e log v so using min heap is better than using linear array. So which is worse for a fully connected graph? In a fully connected graph, all the vertices are connected with all other vertices. So the number of edges approach V square. So if it is a fully connected graph and we use minimum heap, the runtime will be order of e log v but here e will be v square so using minimum heap it's going to be v square log v while using linear array it's going to be v square so when it's a fully connected graph then implementing q using min heap will be performing worse other than the minimum spanning tree problem Single source shortest path problem is another problem that can be solved using greedy algorithms. So what is the single source shortest path problem? So given a connected weighted graph such that all edge weights are non-negative, find the shortest path from source vertex to all other vertices in the graph. 
So shortest path here means minimum weight of the path, where, where weight of the path is the sum of all edges of the path. For example, if you want to find distance on the shortest path uh, between Chicago and Denver, so we can use single source shortest path problem to solve this problem. So Digestra algorithm is used to solve this problem and it outputs the length of shortest path or the shortest path themselves from a given source vertex to all other vertices in the graph. It uses the greedy approach. So it's same as the breadth first search if all weights are equal to one. So how does the Digestra algorithm works? Initially, in the first iteration, mark the source vertex as known and for each out edge from the source, set the distance of each neighboring vertex equal to the cost or the weight of the edge and set its predecessor to initially given source vertex. Then repeatedly until all vertices are known, find an unknown vertex containing the smallest distance, mark the new vertex as known. For each vertex adjacent to the new vertex, examine its neighbors to see whether the estimated distance can be reduced. If so, also reset the predecessor of the new vertex. Here is the pseudocode for Digestra's algorithm. Set of known vertices are initially marked empty. The distance of all vertices is set to infinity and the distance of source vertex is set to zero. And all the vertices are inserted into the priority queue. Then until the queue is empty, we extract the vertex with the minimum distance from the queue and mark it as known and add it to the set of known vertices. Then for each neighbor of the extracted vertex, see if the newest shortest path is found from the extracted vertex. If that is true, set the new value of the shortest path and update the parent of the neighboring vertex. And this whole process is repeated until the queue is empty. Let's apply Digestra's algorithm to the following graph to see how this algorithm works. We will also be maintaining this table to have a clear idea what's going on. In the initialization phase, the set of known vertex is marked as empty. All the vertices are added to the priority queue and distance of all vertices is marked as infinite and the distance of source vertex is marked as zero. Since the distance of the source vertex is zero, it will be the first vertex to be extracted from the queue. So we extract S from the queue and add it to the set of known vertices. Then for each neighbor of vertex S, we check out the distance. Initially, the distance of vertex two, six and seven were infinite, which is greater than the distance between S and two, six and seven. So the distances will be updated in the table and the previous distances will be striked out as the new shortest distance have been found. And then we will update the predecessor of these vertices. After the distances have been updated, in the next iteration, vertex 2 be, will be extracted from the queue as it has the minimum distances from the dist uh, vertices that are not marked as known. After vertex 2 is extracted from the queue, it is added to the set of known vertices. Since the neighbor vertex 3 initially had a distance of infinity, so the new distance will be updated in the table. Here, since it is a single source shortest path problem, 
instead of writing 24 here which is the distance between 2 and 3 we are writing the distance from s to 3 so since the shortest distance from s to 2 was 9 so the shortest distance from s to 3 will be 9 plus 24 which is 33 we will update that and we strike out the previous distance and we update the predecessor for vertex 3. In the next iteration, vertex 6 will be extracted from the queue as it has the minimum distance from this set of unknown vertices. Vertex 6 is added to the set of known vertices. For vertex 3, the distance going through 2 was 33 but distance while going through vertex 6 is 32 so distance is added or updated in the table for vertex 5 the distance previous distance was infinity so we update the distance and the predecessor in the table for vertex 5 however for vertex 7 the distance directly from s was 15 while going through 6 the distance is 19 so we, we will ignore this path. After the distances have been updated, in the next iteration, vertex 7 will be extracted from the queue at it, as it has the minimum distance from all the vertices which are in the queue. Vertex 7 is added to the set of known vertices. The distance of all neighbors of vertex 7 is shorter while going through 7 than the previous distances. So the distance of vertex 5 and 8 will be added or updated in the table and the predecessor will also be updated. After the distances have been updated, vertex 3 will be extracted from the queue as it has the minimum distance from all vertices which are in the queue. Vertex 3 is added to set of known vertices. And since the shortest distance from S to vertex 5 and vertex 8 will go through vertex 3, the distances and the predecessors of vertex 5 and 8 will be updated in the table. After the distances have been updated, in the next iteration, vertex 5 will be extracted from the queue as it has the minimum distance of all vertices that are in the queue. Vertex 5 is added to the set of known vertices and since the distance from S to vertex 4 and 8 is the shortest distance while going through vertex 5, so the distances of vertex 4 and 8 are updated in the table and the predecessors are also updated. After we have updated the distances, in the next iteration, vertex 4 will be extracted from the queue as it has the minimum distance from vertices existing in the queue. Vertex 4 will be added to the set of known vertices. And since the shortest path from S to 8 does not go through vertex 4, the edge between vertex 4 and 8 will be ignored, as the condition here in the if loop will be false. In the next iteration, Vertex 8 will be extracted from the queue as it is the only vertex remaining and has the minimum distance from vertex in the queue. Vertex 8 will be added into the set of known vertices and since vertex 8 does not have any neighbor, the for loop in this iteration will not execute and we move on to the next iteration and since the queue is empty, the while loop will terminate. So using Digester's algorithm, we have determined the shortest distance from source vertex S to all other vertices in the graph. The known vertex set T shows us the order in which the vertices were selected. The distance vector tells us the shortest distance from S to all other vertices in the graph. And using the predecessor vector P, we can figure out the shortest path 
between S and all other vertices in the graph. For example, if we want to know the distance between vertex S and 4, and we also want to know the path between S and 4, so the distance can be determined by the distance vector. So the distance we go to the vertex 4 row, so the distance from S to 4 is 45. And if you want to know the path from S to 4, we work backwards. So the predecessor of 4 was vertex 5. So we move on from 4 to 5. The predecessor of 5 was vertex 3. So we move on from 5 to 3. And the predecessor of 3 was vertex 6. So we go from 3 to 6. And the predecessor of 6 was vertex S. So we go from 6 to S. So the path from S to 4 is S, vertex 6, vertex 3, vertex 5, and vertex 4. So that is how the Jastras algorithm is applied to the graph to determine the single source shortest path. We are using MinHeap to implement the priority queue. The complexity of Dijestra's algorithm will be similar to that of Prim's algorithm. We will require an order of V operations to initialize the distances as well as inserting all the vertices in the priority queue. Since there are V vertices in the queue, so the while loop will execute V times. The extract main function for each individual vertex takes log of V time. So there are total of V vertices. So the total complexity of extract main function will be V log V. Since we are visiting or exploring all the neighbors of each vertex, so that is a total of two times E as sum of the degree of each vertex in a graph is 2 times e. Hence, we go of e for the entire for loop. To update the distance in the heap requires log of v operation. And if we do that for the entire for loop, that will be e log of v. So the inner loop takes e log of v time for the up heap update inside the order of E loop. This is over all execution. So it is not multiplied by big O of V of this while loop. So the total complexity of Digestral algorithm will be V log V plus E log of V. And since the number of edges in a graph is much more than the number of vertices in the graph, the complexity of Dijastra's algorithm will be E log V. Some of the applications of Dijastra's algorithms are traffic information system, mapping, and routing systems. I hope you have enjoyed today's lecture on greedy graph algorithms. Thank you and have a nice day.